If you've watched the video covering the second stage of the surface mount assembly process, you'll know that at the end of that video, we had what was a blank circuit board covered with solder paste, and now with all the surface mount components placed in the correct positions and the correct orientations. And as I mentioned, that board either can be put carefully on a shelf because the solder paste is holding the parts down and it can be run a few hours later or it can be run immediately through the last stage in the process, which is the actual heating or reflow as it's called of the entire circuit board with the components and the solder paste so that the solder paste turns from uh, its crumbly paste-like state into molten metal that then forms a solid permanent electrical connection between the component and the pads on the circuit board. And this process takes place in what's called a reflow oven. And a reflow oven is very interesting. Basically, it looks like a long covered tunnel with a conveyor belt running through it. But within that tunnel are a number of heating elements and heating zones, both at the top and underside of the circuit board, along with fans to precisely distribute and have airflow for the heating process. Now, the heating to get the solder paste to flow correctly so that it will make a good solder joint is actually quite involved. It doesn't just go in at one temperature and go through the tunnel and you're finished. The reflow process requires a number of different stages. The first one is called preheating where at a very precise rate we increase the temperature. The temperature is then held for a certain amount of time before it rises again to a tight peak, which is actually where the solder itself gets or becomes molten, and then a precise time and cool down zone. So at the end of the process, you have a circuit board where all of the solder paste has flown and now you've got good electrical connections at all of those contact points between the pads on the circuit board and the contacts on the particular component. Now, one of the other critical things along with all of those heating zones and the actual temperature is the rate that the conveyor belt is running. If you ran the board too quickly or too slowly through that process of heating and cooling in different zones, you wouldn't get a good solder joint. Yes, the solder paste may have melted, but you're not going to get a high quality and reliable solder joint. Now, like many of these sorts of processes, because you're dealing with a wide variety of circuit board sizes, number of components, some boards may only have five or six surf surface mount parts on them, some may have a couple hundred. Um, because of the wide variation in the, in the number of boards, the types of components, the number of components, the size of the components, there is a certain amount of art that goes along with the science of running a reflow oven. And the paste that's used is critical. All of those temperature and the temperature profile is critical. The run rate is critical, as I mentioned. But once you have the machine dialed in, we're able now to make successful, excellent quality circuit boards. Um, every time we go to run a board, no matter how many components or how few components are on that board. I hope that this series of little videos talking about the different steps of the surface mount technology process have been interesting. Again, if you have any questions or comments, I'd love to read them. Thank you as always for watching and please, if there are other parts of the manufacturing process that goes into making circuit boards or amplifiers or loudspeakers or whatever that you'd like to see, please drop it down in the comments below. I'll look at it and, and often the topics that uh, 
are generated for different videos actually come from your comments, so I really do appreciate them. Thank you, as always, for watching.